Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And today we're playing Undaunted Normandy, finally. Our first Undaunted game we're playing on the channel. Uh, full disclosure, we purchased this game from our local game store uh, uh, after demoing or talking about it at Gen Con a couple years ago after they released, I guess they've now released like five different expansions slash standalone games of this series. Um, but it's always a series I've been interested in since I first saw it. I, li I like the war kind of competitive theme um, it's got that World War II kind of theme put on a deck building game. Uh, you guys know I love deck building games. Um, so it has that with some like tactical dudes on the map kind of combat stuff going on, which is really neat. Uh, it's not that complex. Uh, so I was always interested in getting it. But then they announced that campaign expansion Stalingrad at the one Gen Con. Yeah. And we were like, oh, we love campaign games. Should we get that? Nobody told me there's a campaign in here. You can play this whole game as a campaign. So I was like, man, of course I should start with this game. The first one that came out obviously sold well enough for them to design others. So I'm very excited. Um, I was very excited to play this, but then it just sat in our pile of many, many games we purchased. Thanks to the support of these, these people up, up there somewhere up above Mel's head. Thank you for <laughs> clicking the join button down below or backing us on Patreon. Thank you for supporting us, allowing us to purchase games like this uh, and play them for you guys on the channel amongst all the other um, stuff that's involved in running a live stream like this. Uh, we appreciate it. It is a Monday. Mel's off work today. So that's why we're streaming this uh, today in the afternoon for you. And I'm not alone on a weekday because uh, it is like semi-holiday slash, you know, whatever, uh, Easter Monday for anyone, anyone paying attention. Um, if that's relevant to you, for me, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. I just schedule streams whenever <laughs> they fit and I feel like playing and hanging out with you guys. So... Here we are. Uh, but again, we've only played this, uh, full disclosure, a couple times. Uh, so we're not experts. We're playing scenario three today out of the book. Uh, so if you own the game, we're not going to play the basic intro scenario. We learned with that off stream. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was good to do that for teaching. But then it was like kind of simple. And this one is simple too. But they did a really cool thing with this game that I love. There is um, how many scenarios? 10, I think you said. 12. 12. 12 scenarios come with the game. There are bonus scenarios on their website when I went to look for the digital rule book, by the way, free ones you can download. Um, but they have a built-in campaign and they recommend playing the scenarios in order because they don't introduce all the unit types and all the rules from the beginning. It's very new player friendly. So you can try the first scenario. You don't have all the units, very basic. Not all the rules are there, obviously. And each scenario kind of introduces a larger board, more units to purchase, more decision-making, more strategy choices, uh, which is really neat, uh, really neat. So I was trying to find a scenario that would be good to show the game off, but also we would have fun with a little more choice, a little more complexity. Um, but I just picked scenario three. I didn't want to do two. Two looked like it was kind of could end too quickly or a little too basic, but uh, three is not much different. Uh, we just have a new machine gunner unit added to the game. I'll explain the units we're playing with. I'll explain the rules we're playing with. I'll teach you guys how it kind of works from my understanding. Again, we've only played two times before streaming this, so we're not experts. We're going to play it. If you are a like super undaunted fan, you know all the rules and you're watching live, feel free to yell at us, ask questions, uh, let us know if we're doing something wrong. Uh, or in the comments later, if you're watching, drop it in the comments below. That could help someone else who's learning the game learn from our mistakes. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm kind of cool to try, finally try this game out. Uh, playing it this week and was like, yeah, okay, I, I, I see, I see, I was right, I see why I would like this game. Not just because it's a war-themed deck builder, but uh, it's just a, a good game all around. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll talk more about how we feel about it and all that stuff at the end, but we're going to go through a full playthrough after explaining the game quickly uh, with my rambling kind of unscripted version. There are how-to-play videos out there, I think there's an official, I think there's an official Watch It Played, right, that we yeah. saw? Um, so if you're looking for the official how to play video, uh, it's out there. So that will teach you the game more succinct than my like unscripted live playthrough of the game, you know, but you can definitely learn it watching how we play it. Um, so yeah. Hello everyone joining live. Hello. 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 Uh, Anna says good afternoon. At least afternoon here. It's uh, afternoon for us too. Yeah. It's, we're seven ish minutes into our afternoon here in, mm -hmm. uh, cent no east, southeastern Canada, I, I guess. I, I don't know if that's... Yeah, anyways. Um, Recon Pro, hello. Hello. Yogi, what up? Addy, hello. Minion, hello. Belco, hello. Hello. Okay, Mark, I'm going to stop hello. reading all the names. Oh, Mark, did I miss one? Yep, Mark, see. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, if you're in the chat. Yeah, say hello. 
Oh, your afternoon's almost done. Oh, yeah, Anna, yeah. We're just beginning our afternoon. Anna's obviously across the pond somewhere. Somewhere nice. across the pond. Uh, yeah, we're just starting our afternoon. Um, so yeah, waking up slowly. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, yeah. Oh, Yogi's excited. All right. Do you have this game, Yogi? Oh yeah. Let me do a poll. Oh yeah. How, how many, many people, people have played, have played this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, version of this. At least those are watching live, of course. Oh, Mark's eating lunch at work. Nice, nice. Have you played any Undaunted game? Because there's even like a, I saw a version on Steam or something. I don't know if that's official or a knockoff. Uh, but uh, some people could play digitally. I'm sure there's a version probably on Board Game Arena or something. It's not that complex, so like I could see them easily making a coded version of it. Not just like Tabletop Simulator, but like actual like rules are kind of built in. Um... So yeah, uh, feel free to vote in the live chat uh, whether you've played the game or not. Just out of curiosity, I'll still teach it and try to explain it as best I can. It's not that complicated, so it should be pretty straightforward. Um, but yeah. So Janet is just starting your morning. Nice, nice. Yogi does have this game, okay. Uh, it's afternoon for Mark. <laughs> Hi Rob, come on, don't listen. Don't do this to me. I'm at work. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. So so we would have played this yesterday on Sunday, like normal like weekend stream kind of schedule for the channel. Um, but yesterday we had uh, like our local weekly Star Wars Unlimited tournament and Mel wanted to go to it. Yeah. So then I kind of was like, all right, let's, yeah, let's just delay this till Monday. And, and since, I knew we were, I, yeah. we knew I was off today, so. Yeah, so it, like selfishly we had fun and like, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I opened a copy of, uh, for anyone who cares, a Boba Fett unit. Actually, in my four prize packs, I opened two legendaries, uh, Mace Windu and uh, a copy of Boba Fett, which I was able to trade that Boba Fett, which was my fourth copy I've opened, uh, for like four other legendaries I needed from uh, a gentleman that was working at the store who had his trade binder there, which was great. Um, so yeah, overall, it was very well. I did not win. I went two and two. Yeah, Mel, Mel I don't know what place you're in. They just announced the top four. Yeah, Be because it was Easter Sunday and it was like the only store open in the area, I was like, that could make many people from different stores that are close. All the other game stores were closed yesterday for us. Yeah. Um, but this one, I, I posted in their Discord and they said, yeah, we're open and we're still running our Star Wars Weekly. So Mel and I were like, let's do this. We told some of our local uh, players and they were like, all right, we're in. Um, so it either was going to be super dead where it was like four of us playing or something <laughs> or it was going to be super busy because no other stores. It was a mix of both. We actually, yeah. we had less players. So we had 10 show up, but we had players that have never showed up before because their store was closed. And then we had some players show up because they, we gave out the info, but others that had no idea just didn't go. And people have Easter Friday or Easter Mon uh, Sunday, yeah. Easter Sunday uh, stuff to do. So, uh, but yeah. And the game I lost, I only lost by one point. It was like 24, 24. Yeah. And then my opponent's action is like, I couldn't stop it. And yeah, it was like such an epic game, uh, which was super fun. But yeah, it was it was an awesome day. Um, yeah, it was an awesome day for me. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, but it because... It was fun. Yeah, because I build the collection for both of us, it's like when I can get extra legendaries in our collection to build decks for us, That's it helps both of us. So it doesn't matter who's winning, right? It's right. just as long as we're getting all the loot, uh, which is helpful. So yeah, it was fun. Definitely was fun. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are streaming this today on a Monday. So I apologize. Uh, and then uh, not on a Sunday, as we probably normally would have. Uh, I played Boba Green. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm the bad guy. And I played my Leia deck that yeah. was, has been seen on the channel quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I had to play the Vader. So instead of doing the Boba Yellow I was going to do, I switched to Boba Green last minute, which caused me to make many mistakes in my first game of the day where I was forgetting triggers and stuff. Because, yeah, that was messy. But otherwise, it was still fun. Someone brought a turret deck, which was cool. Anyways, oh, yeah. that's all about a different game. Yeah. We're, we're playing we'll this game today. Star Wars stream. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> we have a Star Wars stream coming up on Wednesday. Uh, I think it might be Twin Suns multiplayer, but we might delay it because we actually have a store showdown tournament coming this weekend. Uh, so Mel and I might actually go to that and then we might prepare for it. So that's a different format. That's Premiere, like 1v1 constructed decks. Mm -hmm. So we might switch the stream back to constructed decks and then just keep playing like to get used to that format um, rather than switching to Twin Suns and then like... Three days later, we're playing in a uh, like a tournament with 32 players. Um, yeah, in a different format. Yeah, in a different format. Yeah. So, anyways, yes, David G. Thank you for reminding them to click yes. the like button. Thank you to all 21 of you who've already clicked the like button. 
Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you're having a good Monday. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, I came in third. Uh, I don't know if we answered. And then no. Mel, we don't I just know. Said, yeah, I don't know my placement, but I was two and two. Yeah, the FFG software was messed up. It was like Mel got paired against the same player she already played in the first round. She had to play in the third round. I got paired down a couple times. I never had to play the like other players that should have been of my same caliber, like uh, based on their score. Yeah. Um, it was definitely messed up. FFG has like software and beta for tournaments, and it is like broken, so broken. Uh, we had them like double checking the pairings and the reporting, and supposedly it was all right. And yeah, people are just getting paired weird, and so it, it was it was chaos. Yeah, even in my final game, I got paired against the person that was undefeated, and I had lost. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah, I know. And there was others that had not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I had to play someone who had lost, and I was oh yeah, I lost too though. But, but I, I lost think, early. I think whoever I was second know. place should have played. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know. It was messy. It was messy. Definitely messy. But that's okay. It was still fun. I got a bunch of packs. Yeah. And they had awesome pulls. Yeah. Somebody did pull a showcase, though. Oh, yeah. Someone pulled a, the, the guy uh, who guy came, who in, came in, second. in second. Yeah. The guy who came in second uh, had uh, a, a director Krennic um, showcase, Yeah. which was cool. Um, so to see that pulled with just 10 of us there on Easter Sunday and no one else is in the store. Like, no one shopping, no one playing the Pokemon event quiet. they have, no one showing up for their Yu-Gi-Oh events that they have normally on Sunday. It was literally only a store of 10 Star Wars players the whole day. It was awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Maybe a couple customers came in. A couple did, I saw, yeah. and they were picking up their orders and stuff. Yeah, but, but it was like... It was quiet. Yeah, it was sure. definitely... It was nice to have the store to ourselves yeah. and just chill and play. And yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, definitely was a cool thing. Instead of streaming with you guys, pff, way more fun. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. I mean, it looks like lots of you are here, which is great considering it's a Monday. So that's good. Uh, if you have the day off today, enjoy. Javier, or Javier, again, I don't know how to say it correctly. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm so sorry all the time. Um, I'm the worst. Uh, asked, what do you think uh, about director credit control? I'm going to build one of those. I'm going to use proxies just to help with the Vaders that I don't own uh, to build two Vader decks uh, with green unit Vader in it. Uh, tune in on Wednesday. I think we'll play that deck on stream as our control deck to kind of play around with. So I have no thoughts because uh, I have yeah. not played it. I don't even know if I played against it at all yet. We're still new. I'm still like, there's leaders I've never seen on the table. Uh, yesterday I played against my first Hera deck <laughs> at the tournament, which was like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? But it went okay. But yeah, it's like still still discovering in that game, which is cool. The possibilities are unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's play Undaunted. Have we killed enough time for people to show up? Yeah, we're really playing this today. This is a for real stream. I know you guys thought we were joking. Yeah. But it's for real. I'm not even addressing that because, again, it only matters in the morning of that day and then later, like, who people are watching it. Like, it doesn't matter. I know, it doesn't matter, yeah. And like I said, in the last stream, I already addressed it, how I just scheduled streams for the weekend, not caring what day of the month it was. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to play today. Uh, if you're looking for other goofy... Funny April Fool's videos on the internet. There's plenty. Go go have fun. Uh, but we're just here to do our usual, just do our job of playing different games on the channel with you guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah. How's right. that poll going for? Oh yeah, let's close the poll. Let's see if people have played this. Let's close the poll. Pew. Uh, sixty-eight percent. I think I just saw. Oh, is no. Says no. Okay. But thirty-one percent. Again, that never adds up. I don't know why. Bad <laughs> rounding. You YouTube, you suck. Uh, 68% have not played a anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Okay. So I'll keep that in mind. We'll explain as we usually do. We'll try to show you guys. This is not, again, such a how to play teaching video. It's more like if you've watched the how to play, come here and then follow along. But I'll try to teach it a little bit for those watching live to understand what's happening. Um, but we'll try to explain things as we go. And then uh, we'll try to crush each other. And win the war. Okay, Mark, what up? Hello. Uh, okay, let's do this. So I'll use this reference in the book for teaching, um, but I just want to show this. So Undaunted is kind of a popular game, uh, a well-regarded game. Uh, right now it's ranked overall 165 out of on BoardGameGeek.com, which again, that rating is kind of like, you know, it's hard to, it's easy to manipulate and it's still probably a very small niche amount of people who actually rank games uh, in our hobby who compared to the people who actually buy and play board games in our hobby. But uh, still, it's 165 overall out of all board games that exist, 27 in the war uh, category. Came out in 2019. 
Uh, it's a 2.24 complexity. It's not the lightest game we've ever played, but definitely not the usual. We usually play things a little more complex. Um, some of the games on the channel, trying to lighten it up a bit over the last couple of years. I've just, in my old age, I'm just getting tired of these 70 page rule books. Sick and tired of them. Uh, so yeah, this is on the more lighter end, at least this version of the game. Again, there's like Undaunted North Africa, Undaunted Stalingrad, Undaunted expansions ex like galore. There's a bunch of stuff. I'm sure there's more planned that I don't even know about. This is like the first one that came out, probably the most basic, I'm assuming, before they start adding extra stuff in. You can get an expansion that beefs this up. And I don't care about any of that right now. I don't give a crap if you own all of it and I should be playing with all of it and Rob, this is not the best way to play. This is the way I'm learning it. I'm going to experience it and I may never buy any more of it, but I may still love it and have fun with it because I play too many damn great games and there's not enough damn time, okay? So delete your comment down below if you're watching later. I don't want to hear about, Rob, you're playing the crappy, you should have eight expansions for this. That's the way you should play. No. No. Not doing it. Stop it. So 68% of people here have never even played this. That We're here for those people like me who literally just played this for the first time a couple days ago. All right. Uh, published by Osprey Games and uh, design Trevor Benjamin and David Thompson. And we met and talked with David Thompson for like 20 minutes at Gen Con a couple years back mm -hmm. uh, who explained his design choices for the game, influences, all, all this stuff. It was a very fun experience. Yeah. Probably talked about it on one of our live streams during that Gen Con. I don't I know. I think we did. I, and I don't know where that was. I can't direct you to it at all. I'm sorry. Uh, too many streams on the channel to find that. But um, definitely was interested in it and then eventually bought it. And here we are to play it. So there you go. That's our story. That is our story. So, if I go here, uh, I have a reference sheet. This is, we're gonna, we have this off to the side. I just want to show this. Um, but all the rules, somebody on Board Game Geek in the file section, if you're looking for this, made a sweet little two page reference that I just printed on double sided pages. Mel and I will have this off to the side to help us. Not all these rules will come into play during this session because, again, we're not using all the units. We're playing only scenario three out of 12. And they slowly introduce everything in the game during all those scenarios. And they say to play them in order. So by I'm assuming scenario 10, we would have every unit, oh, cool. all the tiles, a big board to play on, lots of choice. Um, but a bunch of these things we've never even played with, um, like guiding units and stuff. We don't even play with the unit that guides anybody. But I just want to show this. Very helpful. We'll have this off the side to look at. But in the rule book, okay, ready for mini Rob rant? You know what I always bitch about board games that uh, put a blank rule, a rule book uh, and on the back put a blank page, okay? But when you're learning the game, you always have this rule book near you and it's taking up table space and you need to look up rules, but you just wish you could look up quickly. Uh, yeah, they have a reference, uh, but they put it inside. What the F, bro? Why is this quick reference inside the book and not on the back of this green page? What the hell, man? This is the reason why I rant every time a board game doesn't come with reference or waste the back of the rule book that you have near you anyway. It's sitting on the table. Why can't I just look at some rules quickly or an index or something? But useless, big green and a logo. That sucks, okay? Don't do this if you're designing your game and making a rule book. Please don't. So I just open it and some people are going to cringe the way I like bend my rule book oh, yeah. back. I was doing that yesterday. You know, uh, yeah, look at me bending that rule book. It's going to fall <laughs> apart off the staples any second. It's great. Um, but this reference is okay, but it's inside the rule book, which sucks. Like, uh, it's stupid, right? Very stupid. Um, yeah, very dumb. The game is awesome, by the way. Um, but no game is perfect, so shove it if this is your favorite <laughs> game. I don't want to hear you defending this. It's trash, okay? You can't fight me. Uh, anyways, uh, so yeah. We just printed out these sheets, which are just two-sided. I didn't laminate them or anything. I print them on my crappy printer that's got problems. Um, but yeah, we just have these. Um, but we could have these so but I will use this to explain the game to you as quick as possible. Okay On the board what you see in front of you we have a map built of tiles It comes with a scenario book You choose a scenario Okay, you can even play them as a campaign like I said and it tells you how to play campaign and you re can record and stuff in here Okay um, And it gives you a little history and story in this scenario book and how to use the scenario book um, but you pick a scenario, for example, and you set up the map tiles. It'll tell you what map tiles to use. There's 18 map tiles in the game that are double-sided. And you set it up based on the picture. The game comes with units that are these little circles. This is like a group of units. 
Uh, so you might have a rifleman group of units you'll set up on the board, and they have individual riflemen in that unit. Um, and you'll set up uh, control points. It's basically fighting for control points usually in the game. And you're trying to control these points using your like control token, which are these little tokens that show whether you have control or your rec rec recon. I am playing the side of the Germans, okay, which are the uh, blue-gray color with this symbol, not the other symbol. Uh, and then we have the, the Americans with the star. Uh, so this is the U.S. Unfortunately, they decided not to go with the Allied and throw some Canadians in there. So already, this will never be my favorite game. How <laughs> dare they? No Canadians involved. Not a fan. There better be an expansion that puts Canadians in the game, okay? Because there were Canadian soldiers involved, right? Maybe not in these individual battles they're doing. Maybe it was really only Americans and Germans. I have no idea. I'm not a historical guy, but... Uh, anyways, so I'm playing the Germans, and Mel's playing the Americans. Uh, and she's starting on this side, and we have this scenario set up, which has control points all along here. And like I said, we're trying to fight over control points. So this little recon token, right now, I can move into there no problem. It's been reconned. Uh, but if I flip this, I now control the tile. Only one person can control it. So if Mel's token was here and I took control of it, and I'll explain how to take control later, uh, only one of us can have control. So the, when a control is taken, it would flip the other token. And technically you can't take control of a tile if the enemy has units on the tile based on the default rules. I know there's some variant rules out there that people play with uh, that change the way the game works, but uh, we're not, we're playing with super basic first printing rule book. Um, there you go. Uh, so that's kind of what we're trying to do. That's the goal of the game, at least in this scenario. Scenario three is we're trying to control six objective points for the US and the German objective there is control six objective points. Now, in, b below that is important. Uh, if both sides simultaneously are pinned, aka you have no riflemen left on the board, the riflemen are the only ones that can capture objectives. That's important to know. So if one side runs out of riflemen, that means they're stuck at that many objectives, they'll never take more, and the other team still has to get six. Or if both teams run out of riflemen, there's no way to get more points, whoever has the most points wins. And I think there's other ways to break that tie. Um, but when you are doing a scenario, there's a little historical write-up of what little battle it's kind of abstractly representing. And then your starting cards. It's a deck builder. So there's the list of cards on the left for US that exist in the game. And based on the scenario, they'll tell you if you're playing with it in your deck to start or it's in like your market, basically. The little S is, I forget what that stands for. Uh, there it is, supply. So supply is like your individual market. So if you've ever played a deck building game, instead of Mel and I sharing the same market in the middle and we're buying from it to build our deck, make it better, draw from it, once it's drawn out, discard or uh, shuffle the discard, make a new deck, keep drawing, playing cards. It does that whole deck building thing, except I have a market of my units and units can die, or uh, not units, uh, like soldiers, I guess, that are part of a unit. Uh, so their whole unit's represented by a token but we have multiple copies of like riflemen and machine gunners and whatever. And our gunners aren't in play. So once we get a gunner in play uh, and try to use a gunner card, first we have to get them in our deck. Uh, so there's even like not having access to units. They're still in the market, just like a deck building game. You'd have starting stuff and you can't get those other cool things until you purchase them. Um, so in this game, there's a bolster action to like get cards from your personal market, your supply into your deck to then draw and play to give your units on the, the board uh, commands to like move around, recon, snipe. Um, there's a mortar team we're not playing with that can literally target a, a tile and bomb it with mortars and stuff. Um, tons of that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's what we're doing. We're like buying cards from here, our own personal thing. And of course, no deck builder uh, would be complete without a card you hate drawing, okay? So there is a card called Fog of War. These are limited. So as these get removed from your deck using your um, scouts, they leave the game. So there's a limited pile. So these could all eventually get in your deck, which I tested the last time we played. Yeah. I purposely tried to get these all in my deck and see if I could clear them out and still possibly win the game doing that. Um, so these are each, we have our own one. So this is my like, you know, German Fog of War cards. We start with two in our deck and then we have this set up along the side. 
And it could be different. Every scenario tells you how many fog of wars are in your deck to start and could be different. It's not always symmetrical. We're still playing an earlier scenario. It's just scenario three out of 12. So it still has a symmetrically set up. But I bet you if I go to a later scenario, look. Oh, it, yeah. That's yeah. Right. So Germany has machine gunners in this scenario, oh. uh, number six. But US doesn't even have access to them. Yeah. So it's definitely a different setup. So it's a completely oh. different board. So I was just showing you like the appeal to this game of just playing all these different. Look, look at, at this setup. One. I don't even know if I have the table space to set up that many piles of oh, of market. But look at how different that's it is. That would be. Yeah, like depending on the scenario and the setup, different units are starting at different spots. But again, we're playing a more basic scenario, just number scenario number three or whatever, uh, which I have to find again. And we just set up our deck and our market based on that. And they give you little rule reminders at the bottom, which I love. Oh, crap. Uh, which I love, which is a great job. So we're they're trying to remind us about the hunker down action in this one. In the last scenario, they're teaching us about machine gunners, which would be the first time you play them if you're playing in order. And the first one, they teach us all about controlling objectives. Just a little reminder. Uh, sweet. I love that stuff. Uh, but again, the back of the books is like blank. Like, what the hell? Why doesn't this have a second reference so we can have both books in front of each other in a two-player game? I was thinking that too. They don't give us reference cards that I know of unless they're missing in my box or I, I lost them or something. Um, yeah, but yeah. Because once you set up the game, you don't really need that book anymore. Yeah. But... It is not the most complex game, so of course board gamers will say, well, you should just learn it and remember it, and once you play it a few times, you won't need to look up rules, but it's like... That's you... debatable, right? As you're learning a game, it's yeah. nice to have. Not everyone's played board games before they played this game. You never know, right? So, Fog War. Okay. Um, so yeah, these are called counters. Okay, this counter represents a unit, right? So... It is on the board. It is scouts that have a defense of five and they're scouts from unit B, right? I think. Yes. Or, yeah. Or platoon or... No, I think our whole thing is a platoon. So we have like... A, oh, they're part of a squad. squad. Squad, that's it. So each of us has a platoon sergeant in our deck in this scenario. And this will allow us to bolster three different cards from any piles in our supply to put them in our deck. And this is when you play the card. This is for like initiative battling, how you determine initiative. You must play a card at the start of the turn against your opponent, flip them simultaneously. Whoever has a larger number gets initiative during the turn and then plays out their whole hand in the order they want, picking which options on the cards. So every card's like multi-use. You can use it to try to help you get initiative and discard it for the turn, or you can use it for one of the multiple abilities on the card. So bolstering we'll talk about is how you get cards from your supply into your discard to eventually shuffle in your deck, draw, and play. Command literally is draw more cards off the deck. So you can get more cards in your hand, do more options on your turn. Here's the scout. So this lines up with this scout um, unit on the board. So picture this as a group of scouts, possibly. Right now, it's only one, only one in the deck. So this guy, if he gets eliminated from my deck, I could still keep this guy in play, but I won't have any cards to control him. And how you eliminate them is by attacking and defeating. And when you defeat, you actually get a hit on a unit. The opponent will have to find that unit in their discard pile and discard it. Or no, in their hand first. Hand first, yep. Hand first. If they don't have one in their hand, they have to find a copy in their discard pile and remove it from the game. So over the time of the game, we will have units literally being removed from the game. And slowly, squads uh, will be running out of units. And you could possibly overcome your opponent that way. Um... And then you have to discard a unit out of your deck that matches that card if you got attacked. If you can't find one in the hand, then the discard pile, then you have to get it out of the deck. And it's removed from the game. If there is none of those in your hand, deck, discard pile, you then have to remove the counter off the board and it's gone. Until, you, if you can, bolster another copy of the card into your deck, eventually into your hand, and then play it then you will get to spawn the counter back on the board at, at one of your spawn points that is legal. In this scenario, it's super basic. So we just have these spawns that tell us we spawn every type of unit on this all token. But in the game, there are other spawn tokens. Uh, like this will tell you you can only spawn snipers and mortars here uh, units, or you can only spawn snipers or you can only spawn units from A, B, and C here, but like, I don't know how that changes things. I think there is only A, B, and C. We're not even playing with C in our game. No. Um, 
I think on the back of the all is just an A. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a C on mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have an A on mine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just different ones based on the scenario setup. Might have multiple spawn points, which is interesting. Um, so that's kind of the flow of it. Oh, yeah, there's on the back of the counters, I forgot to mention. If you get suppressed, so there's a way to just attack to try to remove. Um, but there's also a way to suppress, which the machine gunners introduce to the game once you start playing with them. So these guys, when I play it, I can choose to move them. Uh, uh, one, my machine gunner B. So it tells me right on here, this only affects machine gunner B counter in play. But I might have machine gunner squad A in play, right? Um, so I could move this one, one space. They move slow. They attack with two dice. And I'll talk about attack in a bit. We probably should talk about that more when we're actually playing. Yeah, it'll make I more think. sense. Or no, we can talk I mean, about it before. We can talk about it quick, but it'll make more sense. Yeah. Um, and then suppressing is just a way to flip the token over, kind of like stunning it. And the next time someone plays this card, they then, instead of doing an action, they have to waste that card just to flip them back over so they can get them going again. Uh, hey, Con. Um, generally, I don't know if the game is good. That's up to you. I personally think it is, uh, but I've only played it twice before today. Yep. So there's, yeah, if you were I here, well. Con, yeah. if you were here on time, you would know, but obviously, <laughs> oh. obviously you're late for the stream. So I'll need to talk to you after the stream about not being here on time and asking questions that I've already answered. How dare you? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> subjective, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do your research. Might not be a game for you. Uh, no game is for everybody. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's how that works. Okay. Let's go over some of the actions we have access to. So in our decks, like I said, uh, we both have a platoon sergeant. Okay, very powerful, but only one of. You can't get more of them. He can't die because he has no counter in the game. It's just a card in your deck you'll see. Um, and it's always good, it seems. I, I don't see why you wouldn't want to do one of those things. Then we have squad leaders, which I think we have one for each A and B. Okay. And they let you bolster only from the squad. So I could add two cards, any of the B cards, machine gunners, riflemen, scouts, into my deck. Or I can inspire, which is one of my favorite actions, which allows you to reuse any B squad card that you've played that turn. You get to pick it back up to hand, and you can play it again later in your turn and reuse it. And when you reuse it, so let's say I have this uh, squad leader B. Let's say at the start of the turn I played this rifleman, and I chose to move with them. I could then play this guy to inspire, bounce this back to hand. Do something else, play another card, and then play this guy after to, like, attack. Or move again. Very powerful, very cool. So they help direct your units. While we're looking at a rifleman, riflemen are the only ones in the game that can control. So again, we're trying to control six points each. Um, and if you lose all your riflemen, there's no more left in your supply, none left in your de deck, discard pile, or hand, you're pinned. So there's no way you can capture more points. So it's just up to your opponent to get six points by then, or you get rid of all their riflemen, and then it ends, and we decide, because both sides are pinned, then we count up victory points and decide the winner. Yes, this is a deck-building yes. game. Yes, yes Wookie Mart. Yeah, deck-building game, 100%. But we, have sh uh, we don't share a market. That's really the difference. So it's a deck-building game, but with units on a map uh, that we're controlling using the cards. Yes, 100% a deck-building game. Uh, so that's Rifleman. And then we have scouts. So scouts are kind of like the way that you're going to be able to move around the map. So if you played any like real-time strategy games on computer or whatever, and they have like, like fog of war, and you can't really move around and build until you've kind of explored an area and cleared it out, that's what these guys do, the scout action. So when they scout around the board, they will, they will drop these tokens when they first move into a spot. Um, and when they drop into a spot, let's say I move this scout, I move them here. They've already been here, there's a recon, it's fine. That's a recon symbol. But when I move into this space, there is none there, I would drop a recon symbol, and then I would have to put a fog of war in my discard pile. So as I spread out and control, uh, not control, as I spread out and expand on the map, uh, I'll have to take fog of war. Now, related to the scout, if on a turn I have a, a Fog of War in my hand that does nothing, it's annoying. You can't play them. You can play them to kind of try to get initiative with a one, but good luck. Mm -hmm. um, and get them out of your hand that way. But if you save them in hand, this recon action will actually allow you to discard one from the game, remove a copy from the game from your hand. 
not from your discard pile. It's not like other deck builders where you can trash cards from your discard pile. It's not that. Um, but it does have a cool effect to it. If I have this in hand and I remove it from the game with the recon, I actually get to draw a replacement card off the top of my deck. So it's really cool. Um, but again, if I'm doing that on the turn with this card, that means I'm not scouting, I'm not attacking, and conceal, one of the most fun things in competitive games, instead of removing a Fog of War from my hand, a conceal would take a Fog of War from my opponent's supply and put it in their discard pile. So I can mess with them and kind of make their deck full of junk by concealing if I want to play that. Um, so that's that. Uh, oh yeah, related to scouting. Those are also the control marker, like I said before. Uh, why I'd want to scout? Why do I need these scout symbols here? Because riflemen and gun machine gunners uh, can't move into places that you either don't control and they can't move into places you don't have this little binoculars. And both factions can have the little binoculars there, the little recon. And that means Mel's units can move in here, my units can move in there, no problem. But the only way to get into a, a space you don't have a recon symbol or control it is by using that recon action to move and scout the area, basically, with your scouts, right? Make sense? Um, yes, I'll remove that, Mel, don't worry. And yes, I'll remove yours. I think that's one too we need to remove, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Because uh, teaching. I just don't know what that one is. Uh, it should just be that, I think. We can double check after I'm done teaching and hopefully mm -hmm. I didn't ruin it. No, it's okay. We'll, we'll double check. It always happens where I like ruin the whole setup trying to teach and then it's like <laughs> it's we start okay. playing and we're like, wait, this is wrong. It's okay. We'll double check it. It's I set good. it all up before stream for no reason then, but it's all good. Um, and yeah, let me put my gunners back. Um, anything else here? So we start with two Fog of War. We start with... In our decks, we start with one of each rifleman, uh, one from B, one from A. We start with squad leader A, squad leader B, platoon sergeant I've already shown, and again, and then a scout A and a scout B. That's what we start with both in our decks. So a nine card deck, I think, and we can shuffle that up. Okay. Yep, nine, I have nine. And let me just check here. So that's kind of what's going on in the game. But uh, overall, the round order is we both, at the start of a round, as you see in the green box on the left there, let me, uh, maybe we can do this. Uh, we draw four cards each. Then we determine initiative, which you'll see many times during the game, where we pick a card of the four, and you lose that card for the turn. You have to do this. Somebody always starts the scenario with initiative, and it's different for every scenario. But if you have initiative and you play the same number card, and that's that number in the top left I showed earlier. One of the cards in your hand you have to choose not to play that turn, literally discard it to use the value in the top left to try to win initiative or not. Maybe you don't want to have initiative. Maybe you want the player to move closer to you, get in range, and then you attack and respond, right? Um, but the initiative, if there's a tie, just stays with the person who already has initiative. And initiative is marked with this double-sided token here. So we have... If Mel has initiative, it's the white and green, which matches her white and green theme going on there. And if I have initiative, it's the white and blue, which matches my stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I start with initiative in this scenario based on that big bold line there in the middle. Starting initiative, Germany. Okay, Germany. All right. Uh, and then here, you go to player turns, uh, and that's just... The person with initiative goes first, plays all their cards, does their things they want, then discards all their cards, and then holds their hands and not draws four new cards like every other deck building game that exists. And I will do it by accident many, 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 many goddamn times because it's force of habit. You just have to sit there with an empty hand and watch your opponent do their turn. Once they're done their turn and discards all their cards, then a new round starts, then you draw four cards, okay? Okay? So yell at me if I start drawing four cards after my turn when I go first, okay? Don't do that. Uh, and then taking card actions, you see there, there's a card action you can take, and I've talked about the ones we have in our game, and there are more in the game. We don't, we're not playing with every unit again, but you can always hunker down. And hunker down is a very cool effect. So I love board um, de deck building games where you can remove the crap in your deck you don't want. So in this game, as you saw, the recon ability removes the fog of war from your deck to help get those out of your deck to start, you know, making your, your engine more efficient, right? There's also, this game goes one step further. The hunker down action allows you to get rid of the other cards in your deck 
and um, put them back in your supply. So there is like strategy, I'm assuming to this, and again, I'm not the best, I've only played twice, where, especially in the later scenarios when you have tons of options of units, where maybe at the start of the game you're scouting a lot, but then you've scouted all the places you want to scout, and you want to stop drawing scouts, they're annoying. You want to start drawing machine gunners, mortar snipers, all that stuff, right? So what you could do, instead, if your scouts have kind of done their job and you want them just kind of watching an area or guarding an area, um, you can kind of put them you know, hunk, they're hunkered down, put them in kind of a rest mode. And all you do is instead of playing the card, you put it back in your supply. Now it's out of your deck. The unit stays on the board. Again, if they're then attacked, there's nothing in your hand, deck or discard to like maybe keep them on the board. But maybe you don't want to see it's fine. Maybe you don't want to see them anymore for now. They're not part of your strategy. Get them out of your deck. So there's this whole game within the game of hunkering down, which in this scenario, they say you need to start thinking that way. So maybe after we've scouted enough, maybe we just want to get them out of our deck and start getting those machine gunners in there and start seeing our, you know, our, our firing happening, you know, like our, our offense start taking control, you know, or defense in some cases. Um, so again, we're only dealing with the movement action, the scout action. We do not have the guide action or the stock action because we're not playing with units that have those abilities. But if you want to pause the screen or go watch a how to play video, they can show you that stuff. I don't care about it. We haven't used it, but it's there. I'm just showing you the game. It does get a little more complex, which is fun. Um, supporting, we're bolstering, we're doing command, we can conceal, we can control, we can inspire, we can recon, but we're not doing target. Target is only related to the mortars, about targeting a, uh, a tile to then bomb it with your mortars with a separate action. Let's talk about combat though. How do you use attack? How do you use suppress? How do you blast? Blast is again tied to the mortars. You only see in our playthrough today, attacking and suppressing. You basically choose a target on the board, okay? You then determine the target's defense. So on the actual token, the, the, let's say I'm, I'm shooting at these gunners, okay? And I'm attacking them for one. The one means I'm just rolling one die. The defense is mi minimum four, but the gunners could be on this space that I'm shooting at they get a bonus defense based on the terrain. So if they're in a forest, they now have seven defense minimum. If they're in this little field hiding behind a line of trees, they might have one defense extra. They could be on a hill. We're not playing with hills, but hills have different um, defense values based on if you're on the hill and someone else is on the hill firing at you versus not on the hill firing at you, um, which is really cool, but we're not playing with that. It's more advanced rule. So you would add that number in, okay? Additionally to the defense, you're also adding the distance. So technically Mel can use her rifleman way back here who attack for one and she can attack my gunners all the way down here. I don't think you'd want to do that uh, because we're only rolling D10, okay? So right here, my gunners have four plus three, that's seven, plus the rifleman is firing from one, two, three away so literally, that is 10. So she could hit, but the only die on a D10 that can make a hit, does anyone know? Anyone, anyone, is 10. So you'd have to roll a zero uh, on the D10 that they gave us. It doesn't go to 10, only goes to zero. But that is the highest number. And if you roll a zero, no matter the situation, is always counted as a hit. And then you'll resolve casualties, which is if I had a gunner in hand, I discard a gunner. If I don't, I must look for Gunner B in my discard. And if I don't have it in there, I look for Gunner B in my deck. And hopefully there's one in there. If there's not, I will remove the token from the board. And it's gone until I can get another Gunner card back in my deck and played. Uh, otherwise, I would remove from game one copy of this Gunner card, no matter how many hits were achieved. So if you're attacking with a unit that attacks for four, you would roll four dice. Only one needs to hit. All four could hit, but it's still only kills one member of the unit okay and that's kind of how that works uh so obviously you kind of the closer you are to your target if you can catch them out in the open all matters more likely you're going to hit again these machine gunners that are this scenario is the second scenario we see them in uh they were introduced in scenario two but they suppress so you roll more dice but all you're doing is kind of delaying the opponent you're not removing any cards from the game 
You're just flipping the token over and stalling them, which is a strategy that's good to do sometimes to slow your opponent down while you're trying to get your stuff done, right? Prevent them from capturing an objective that way. Okay. Uh, anything, Mel, you think I didn't cover? No. Before just playing and showing how it works? I don't think so. Yeah, the scenario's not that complex. Again, if we were playing like scenario 10, I'd probably have another 20 minutes explaining other actions, other units, other things on the board, uh, different terrain and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is pretty pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Good to show you the just of the game. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Okay. Do you want to just double check? That? I think everything except for this guy's got to go. And then oh, yeah, yeah. I think everything else is so good. Again, my gunners aren't on the board. Mel's gunners aren't on the board because we don't have those cards even in our deck. They don't start in our deck, so they're not on the board uh, as part of the setup. Um, yeah. So I have Scouts A, Scouts B, Rifleman A, Rifleman B starting on my spawn point which I technically don't even control. I just have a recon symbol. So these units can move to here or here, no problem, before doing a recon action to scout the area or whatever. I have zero control points to my name. On the board, we need six, okay? So if I start looking at the board, I'm here, and I have three, four, five, six, right in front of me. So literally, we could play this game because Mel, she technically controls her starting spot, Thanks, designers. Mel technically is winning right now. She has two control points already. So right now it's two to zero. Americans are ahead, okay? But there is a two victory point up here and a two victory point over here. So technically Mel can just move one space with a rifleman. As long as no enemy units are there, she then could play that rifleman card again and do a control. And she would put a... Oh, she, have she, to, has, to scout first. she has to scout and do a recon first, move a rifleman in, then play that rifleman card again somehow, to do a control. She would then flip her token, and now she has four points. If she can get across to here, she could do the same thing here. She could get six points, I could get six points, and we never even have to go into each other's faces and fight each other. <laughs> Just looking at this now on camera, I'm seeing that as a thing. That did not happen no. in the game we played off camera. I will tell you that. There was lots of death, <laughs> was lots of fighting, piece. lots of anger. <laughs> uh, it was all good fun. Yeah. It was a very close very game. Close game. Very close game. Very close game. Very close game. So yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at here on the board. So again, you could play this scenario many, many times, and based on how the cards are drawn, and how the strategy works, and what your opponent decides to mess with you on, and which units they take uh, serious and, and try to kill and stuff, uh, could change how you're going to play the scenario. So I don't know if I should, I should probably capture this three at some point in the game to make me win. I doubt I can get up here and like wipe you out and take these spots, you know? Maybe you just take those spots and you lock them down and I can't do anything about it. But then that means you'd have to come for these two victory points probably, or that those two victory points, or somehow sneak over here and steal these three. Totally possible. It could happen based on what's going on, so who knows? So that's what we're dealing with today. Um, yeah. Uh... Oh, the book is wrong, says Mike James. Uh, everything begins and ends with Mel. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. Well, I am sure. winning. I do start with two points. So, I mean, I'll take starting with two points over being the starting player. Yeah, yeah, Mel's <laughs> winning. <laughs> this sucks. Mel's winning. I hate this game. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, I'm just double check here that we set everything up right. You have four units on your side. I have the four uh, tokens or whatever units on my side. Counters. You have control of your spot. That's where you spawn your guys. It's worth two victory points. You have a recon token and two spots adjacent. Two victory points there. Along the bottom, I have a one, 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 and a three victory points. My spawn point has my four units. I, I have a recon there and then two adjacent, I think. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, here, here, and here. I put my recons not like they do in the book. I just figured I'll always put mine in the bottom right so they're easily to identify and Mel's in the top left. I just found that's easier to like keep it clean. So when we're on the same tile, we both have those tokens there. One's in one corner closer to you and one's in one corner closer to me. So that's why I set these up like this. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Not that it matters. Undaunted Norm Normandy, pacifist edition, yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll agree that I'll play over <laughs> here, you play over there and you stay in your sandbox. I'll stay in my sandbox and we'll just race to get the victory points. This is a weird, seeing the layout all on camera there, I was like, wait. Yeah, everything's on my side. You got stuff on your side. Technically, your win condition's there. Mine's here. But I don't know who can do it faster. 
I don't know. I guess it depends on what cards you take and how you see them in your draw. Yeah. And still, doesn't mean we can't shoot each other from here to here. It just would be very hard to hit, which yeah. is kind of fun. Yep. Ah. <sighs> Lots of war game design is not meant to start off balance. It's trying to tell you a story. Yeah. Story embedded in mechanics. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but this does have a little story, which I won't read, but it's here. So this is kind of what it, what the scenario is based off of. But again, if it's not balanced, I'm not a fan. I know in like Memoir 44 and stuff, they'll like design the scenario to be unbalanced to try to be like quote unquote historically accurate-ish. And then they just tell you, switch sides and play again and compare scores. Oh. I don't like playing games that are unbalanced. I don't care how much you're trying to tie it to theme, which is probably why I should stay away from some of those kind of war games, uh, the more heavier ones that people play. I just want a game I'm playing against my opponent to feel balanced. I don't want to feel like no matter what I do, I'm just trying to stop the opponent from winning faster or more. Um, but yeah. I know you can still win in those. They're just unbalanced. And pure unbalanced, I don't even want to start playing. But again, Memoir 44 is light enough. This is light enough. So if that's the case, it's short enough, not that heavy, that I'm okay if that's a thing. But I prefer to avoid games where right from the beginning, you know you have a less chance of winning. Not great. Okay. What about if you were playing it in a campaign and some are more favored to one side? And that was like when we played uh, Imperial Assault was like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's fair, right? Because it's, it's like okay. some are favored yep. to you and some would be yep. favored to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But if you're playing one off, I could see why that would be kind of frustrating. Okay. Anyways, but yeah. But yeah, the different starts is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like perfectly aligned, like symmetrically like chess or whatever, right? Which is cool. Okay, uh, so we need to draw four cards. Start of the round. I'm just gonna shuffle a little bit more. Uh, so I have initiative to start, but we're gonna battle for initiative right here from the beginning. So let's do it. I'll put my card in. You put your card in. We'll feel them at the same time. One v one. I keep initiative. Okay, so then you only have three cards to work with on your turn. Unless you can do other things to change that. Like... Mm, maybe I don't. Mm, okay, I'll start off by bolstering B for my squad leader. So that just means go shopping. Or a, a kick in their, um, you know, their uh, sleeping quarters and tell them to get the hell out here or wake them up from the tank they're resting in or whatever, uh, or their tent. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, there was a question from Edward asking, any rules for moving across the river? No. No, right? not... Move, no. Just like... I think just thematically that's in here because there was a river in the scenario, if you read the story, um, setting up the scenario. No, no rivers crossing water. It's just part of how the scenario is laid out. You can go across. Because we're like fighting over a river. Which I think that's why the control points are there, to kind of symbolize like trying to control the river. Yeah. But again, for some reason Mel can win by never caring about the river. So that's weird, right? I don't know. Anyways. I didn't read the story, so I, I don't know, but whatever. Uh, okay. Let's play the game, though. Uh, I am going to bolster from B. So that just means I can only take cards from B. Each bol bolster point is one single card. Doesn't matter which one. Those aren't costs in the top left. Those are literally just for that initiative battle. Um, so, what do I want here early game? I think scouting might be good, because, like, that's how I'm going to get around the map, I guess. And if my scouts are in the front line, they could help me attacking. And they can also help me get rid of fog of war cards. But, I don't know, should I get a machine gunner online as fast as possible? I don't know. I'm going to try it. And then I'm going to... Yeah, let's get a scout going from B. Okay. And that's my bolster. And the next one I'm going to play. How do we do this? Should I bolster now, get more dudes in there, or should I command? I'm sitting with a fog of war in hand, so it would be really cool if I could grab a scout to help me get it out of hand already. I think that'd be really fun. It's probably not the right play. I probably should be bolstering right now. But I'm going to try something different as I did in both games I played before. Um, just to kind of see. Uh, so I'll command two, which helps me draw two more cards. I got a rifleman 
and a squad leader. So not a scout. So that didn't work out. Doesn't mean it's bad. So what I'll do is now I'm going to bolster. So at least I get to bolster more. That's fine. Um, so I'll bolster two from A. Uh, I'll try a machine gunner from there too. And maybe a scout again. Yeah, let's, I don't know. I'll be symmetrical, I guess. I, I don't know if that's good. Um, <clears throat> try scout heavily going forward. It's scary, though, if I only have one rifleman in my deck. Because if somehow you kill a rifleman, you only need to kill him again, and then I'm wiped off the board. Doesn't mean it'll just take longer to get them back going. So it's like risky. I really want to get rifleman right now, which I normally would do. But uh, I'm trying something different. And again, order matters. Because if I would have... Instead, drawn cards first, which I should have done. I could have played my squad leader after to inspire this rifleman and get to play him twice. So I definitely probably did things weird there, but again, we're learning. We're just here to demo the game, not show you the best way to play it. Uh, so I'll play this guy, uh, my B rifleman. And I'm not going to attack. It's too far away. Controlling, I mean, I could control my home little point here. It doesn't have an objective on it, so I kind of don't care. So what I'm going to do is uh, just move my Rifleman B. I'm going to move up here to this uh, little river spot here. And maybe in the future control this spot or something. So we'll see. Uh, and then this Fog of War does nothing. I didn't draw a Scout to recon it away. So it will all just be discarded. I end my turn. I don't draw new cards. And I let my opponent go. So normally that turn would have taken two seconds. Um, but... I'm trying to teach and demo the game, so I'm going to be really slow about it. FYI. Oh. Okay. And please, if I should have said right at the beginning, if you're new here, yes, you can complain in the bottom uh, comments how long this video is and this playable. How come this playthrough took two hours or three or five, whatever? How garbage, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're live streaming it, by the way, and teaching it at the same time. Uh, we're not trying to make the quickest playthrough possible and make a bunch of mistakes. Uh, we're trying to teach the game, enjoy the game, have fun, and hang out with friends in the chat. Okay? So screw you. All right. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. All right. My first action, I'm going to start with uh, Scout A, mm. who I'm going to use to scout up to two. Um, but we're just going to scout... Oh, oh, I could do... Oh, interesting, interesting. So I'm definitely going to scout into here. And then I could also scout into Fogel here. Work. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, get out of here, try man. This. Let's try this. So we're going to add two Fog of Wars for those two scouts. Get out of my neighborhood. Okay. Then we are going to play a, a squad leader B, who is going to bolster B. And I think we want to get some riflemen going like ASAP to kind of get these control points. So let's Mel's going to rush me. Mel's rushing me for the win. She saw what I did and like, he's playing slow. <laughs> What? I'm going to rush in there and, and score fast. Yeah, we're going to take this time. We're going to take two Rifleman Bs. Yeah, okay. that's probably the right strategy. <laughs> and then Scout B. Now, I think I'm going to try something completely different to what I did last time. Again, we didn't stream it before. It was off camera. But what Mel's saying is, yeah, she's playing different like I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we try different things and I see what works sure. and what doesn't. Um, so now I can do my Scout B. Um, there's a play of, a, of like, kind of like running him this way and kind of see what happens. So we'll recon here. This one's already been recon. How many Fog of War? Fog of War, which might be bad because it might be too Can many fog of, fog of Wars in my discard. Yeah, but as you saw last time we played, I did that and it worked okay. Yeah. Alrighty. And that's the end of the round. Okay, so new round. Draw four cards. You drew. That's why you ah. did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like I screwed something up again. All right. Uh, so initiative time. Initiative time. Ready? Yep. One. Uh, five. You got it. So I keep my initiative. Rifleman's discarded. I oh, probably shouldn't have done that. Um, okay. 
Let's do scout B. We'll scout two. Uh, let's go one, two. Okay, so I scouted there. I have scouted here to fog of ores to my discard pile. Okay. Probably should do this first. I always mess up. Uh, okay, Scout A is just going to recon, which removes this Fog of War from the game uh, and draws me a card. Yeah! Ah, I did that roll. I'm redoing it. I'm sure. redoing it. It doesn't change much. Oh, yeah. I think those... But I should do it before these get shuffled in, maybe, right? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, yeah. I did that backwards. Okay. So let's say we got rid of one Fog of War. Uh, so then just put these here for a minute. Yeah. Put these here. So that didn't happen. Uh, a is doing this. Shuffle deck. Yeah, yeah. Again, learning, but still. Didn't affect anything my opponent did. I didn't roll any dice or flip any new cards or anything. No new info was gathered, so I'm redoing it. I should know better. Sequencing matters in deck building games, but at least in this one. Not always. Some games just like oh, yeah, dump your hand, collect like Harry Potter, Hogwarts battles, kind of like. Yeah, or Star Realms. Yeah, they're kind of kinda like. like that. Doesn't matter. Play everything, add up your numbers, and apply them. Yeah. And then dump, dump your whole hand. There's no holding cards for next round, though, in this game. That's the only thing it's like kind of I like in games. There's a little more to it. So I am drawing one card to replace that Fog of War I lost. Mm -hmm. And it's a Rifleman A, okay? I think I still will just do the same uh, Scout for two with B. And we'll go through here like I did before. Okay, two Fog of Wars will be added to my discard pile, which is now... The only discard pile. So I have some time before those show up, which is I th maybe not good. Maybe I wanted to see them earlier to get rid of them. I don't know. But I think that's the better way to do it. Maybe. And then we play Rifleman A, which are right here. Uh, I could attack here. Uh, one, two. So that's uh, seven or higher roll on a single die. And I could hit the scouts once. Mm hmm Might be not bad. Or I just move them. Instead. Hiding in the trees. I don't know. Because then they'll be closer. I need to get them up there doing stuff, I think. So that's probably the urgent thing to do. Uh, okay, and that's my turn. Go. Alrighty. Let's start with the Platoon Sergeant. Now I can command and draw two cards, but I think I want to bolster three because he is very versatile in what I can take here. So let's bolster three. Um, I'm going to take a Machine Gunner A, a Scout A, And hmm, a machine gunner B. Okay. We're going to play a uh, squad leader A. So I can, I don't have any um, A cards that I can fire back. So we're going to bolster two A cards, which will be a. Rifleman and a machine gunner. And then I have a Rifleman B who is here. So I don't think it's smart to attack the scout, but I definitely think I want him to move one into position here. And that's me done. Good? Yep. Five, uh, three, sorry, three. You have initiative. All righty. Go. All righty, all righty, all righty. 
Uh, the bottom left square, Addy does do something. It's a forest, has three defense. Uh, yeah, it's not a blank space, just FYI, in case you're curious. Yeah, so this is a, a, a space on the board. You might want to go here because that's three defense. That's all I'll kind of say. All right, I'll start with a, a Rifleman B who will control this location here. Nice. So Mel's at four victory points to my zero. Then... Getting wrecked. Let's use our Scout B to Scout 1. Taking a Fog of War. And then Rifleman A will move 1 in this direction. Okay. Uh, let's go... I'll play Machine Gunner B, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to add a Machine Gunner to my spawn point. And then I'll pick an action. I'm going to uh, move them to here. Okay. And then I will Let's bolster B. Let's get machine gunner. And let's get a machine gunner. I'll try that out. And then squad leader A, I'll bolster. Let's go. Machine gunner. Machine gunner. Trying completely different. I see what you're doing here. Yeah, way different if than I did last online, time. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'm trying something <laughs> so different than I've played before and different oh, from what no. you're doing. Because you're doing like what I did last time. You're copying my strategy from last game. I'm going to try a completely different one. Probably fall on my face. I'm playing like the villainy long game here. And uh, you're playing the her heroism rush game. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. All right, done. Go ahead. Uh, oh, new round, right? But yeah, this is interesting. Could come down to some nifty die rolls. Yeah. Some dice luck. We'll see. Again, I'd love to talk about why I'm doing things, but like then I give them away to my opponent. But we can definitely talk about it after the playthrough of like why we were trying to do certain things. Like it's kind of obvious Mel's kind of trying to split her rifleman to come over here, capture this point. She already has four. If she just captures this, she wins. So, and I'm not, I'm not even up there to stop that. So technically, like, I need to stop this here. Um, I probably can't do it in time. So I probably already have lost based on what's happening. Um, but I, I'm just gambling. I don't care on stream. You guys can play your own game. If you like the game, buy it and play it however. Um, so again, not here for the strategy. Just here to have fun and explore the game still. We're still in the state of we bought the game and we're only on our third playthrough. Mm -hmm. So like you would do when you're playing the game, we're just goofing around having fun. Um, you know, so just showing that you can do that. But uh, yeah, don't don't get if you want to see best strategy in the wrong place. Um, yeah, you can probably debate it online in like the board game geek forums and stuff. What are good strategies? So yeah, just getting that clear out there. I know the comments will be coming. Uh, all right, I will um, pick. Good. No, not good. No, take your time. It, uh... mm. Mm. Yeah, let's do it. One. One. So you take initiative. Go ahead. Okay. 
Machine Gunner A are coming in, spawning here, and then we will have them move to protect here. And then Rifleman B, I think he will uh, attack Scout B. So defense of five plus one, so six. Yeah, plus one, so you have a roll six or higher on the die. Nine. Nine. So what, who is it again? Scout B. Scout B. So I look in my hand. I don't have Scout B. I look in my discard pile for a Scout B. Oh, there's one. So it's removed from the game. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Blood was drawn. Go ahead. Machine Gunner A. I think you have... One more in there. I think I should probably. Maybe my machine gunners will attack again. Scout B. Mm -hmm. Rolling two dice. Oh, got him. So which is it again? Scout B. Scout B? Yeah. Okay, so I looked through my hand. Nothing. I look back through my discard pile. Scout B's. No. Uh-oh. I look in my deck. Scout B. Oh, Remove from game. Then I shuffle my deck. <laughs> And then I put it back. And I'm done. Okay. Uh, I will. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I can actually do anything to stop the game. Yeah, because there's like too many units to like kill here. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll just try it. Like, the only thing I can do now, I definitely can't get up to here to stop you. So it has to be here. You've put two units there. That's kind of makes it unstoppable. So, and to, uh, to take control of this, I'd actually have to remove these two units from here, which I don't think could happen in the time you need to just draw this card twice. No, three times, right? Oh, One yeah. to move, two to move, and then control. And if you get an Inspire, you could even do that in, like, two turns. So yeah, and you drew Rifleman cards, so you're like really racing, and I think I failed because I didn't take that same approach. So we'll just play it out, but I'll try I'll try my best, but yeah, I think it's kind of mathematically impossible, unless you really screw up, but I don't, I don't think so. Because to even get this card out of your hand to stop you from playing it, I'd have to like shoot from way back here and get super lucky to kind of slow this down. So I could maybe try that. That's maybe my only hope. But while I'm doing that, you then can maybe start pushing. No, you don't even need to push there. You just still need to just buy Rifleman and get him here. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll try. Not giving up yet, but I feel very uh, behind. Okay. Uh, let's go with Scout A. If I do that, maybe I should be drawing more guys first, and maybe that can give me options. Super laser blast says Yogi. All right, yeah, exactly what I need to do. Exactly what I need to do. Bait you and then run the game long and then blow everything up. But that doesn't exist. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'll try to be faster. Um, so I'm going to rifle in. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's just attack across here to this guy who's like eight or higher. Uh, yeah. That's a four. So wasted card. Uh, then I will... Um, let's have Scout A do the same. One, two, so eight or higher. One die. Sure. Oh, a nine. Okay. Scout, My scouts uh, are actually Rifleman pretty... Rifleman A, right? Yeah, so Rifleman A, you need Rifleman to search a. your discard pile. Okay. And then with the Platoon Sergeant... I want to bolster more, but it's like I should. I shouldn't. I, I don't know what to do. I think it's dumb. I'm just gonna play. Oh, I know this is a fog of war, so that's really sucky to draw into. And then I could just draw another fog of war. Yeah, I guess I'll just bolster. Uh, three cards. Yeah, I don't know which one to do. No, let's just go all B. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. 
Okay, done. Yeah, to stop doing my strategy, and I'm just gonna just hopefully, hopefully change it up here, and desperation plays will work out. We'll see. We'll see. So if I can kill that rifleman, that, but then you could just start taking this rifleman over there, and then I like yeah, but then that gets you off that space. I don't know. Who knows? Try just. Actually, no. Definitely a cool game though. Definitely a cool game. All right. Uh, ready? Yep. Seven. You have initiative mm -hmm. by a long shot. <laughs> I need to get my rifle in A. He's yep. kind of in danger. Mm -hmm. But I should have played my one. I had one there. Oh, that's all I got. Um, okay. Uh, machine gunners. Where are they? Oh, I'm not even on the board yet. Uh oh, that's not good. Yeah, those fog of wars are gonna uh, be. Let's go command, draw two. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do rifleman B. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need six. four, five, six or higher. Seven. Oh, man. Rifleman A. I think there's a total of like five in the game. Yeah. So I literally need to remove five cards to fully eliminate this possibility-ish. But you still have other riflemen, so it's like, that would be a lot of cards. But I think that's the strategy I have to go for. Okay. And let's do rifleman A. It's gonna move. Should I just shoot from there? That's a one, two, three, seven or higher. That's like kind of lame. I think I do it. Yeah. Desperation. Whoops. Seven or higher. Firing all the way at this rifle, man. Seven. Oh, I think you got it. Get him out. I think you got it. Caught him out in that field. Pants down. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I. Either what do you way. got? What do you got? I think that's. Do you have one? No. Take it off the board. Get it out. All right. We've delayed losing. We've delayed losing. Of course, for a one. Like, I couldn't get the one that would have let me bolster so, A. So this is good that this happened uh, for teaching purposes. So Mel removed that counter. She still has... So now that I know she has no more Rifleman in her deck or her discard pile, she has no cards in hand. But I know she has some in her supply. You're never allowed to look. I think it's in the rules. You're never allowed to look through your opponent's removed cards right. to kind of figure out. There's always some mystery to it. But because you remove that counter, I know that information. And I know this open information here. Um, so I know she has two more Rifleman Bs that she could get into her deck. She has to then play one to add that Rifleman counter. Or Rifleman A's, sorry. Rifleman A's. Right? That's what I killed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, A's. Yeah. A's. So to get Rifleman A back on the board at the spawn point, um, she would need to get Rifleman A's in her discard, eventually make them through her deck, and then drawn into hand and played... Then when she plays it, just like we've been doing the machine gunners, she would then spawn it here and then can start giving it commands. Um, so I've delayed her. I haven't stopped her from doing that strategy, but I've delayed her. Uh, which is good. It buys me some time with what I'm doing over here. I was trying to like build a big army and get rid of Fog of War cards, but that's too slow. I got some lucky dice rolls though. All right. Um, then two cards left. Uh, let's do Machine Gunner A, which I will spawn them in, mm -hmm. and I will, um, let's move them to here, <laughs> hiding them defensively. Yeah, I see that. For now. And then Machine Gunner A, one, oh, I should probably start, start killing this guy, or I can start messing with these guys. Scouts A. Hmm. So the thing with the gunners, they roll two dice to attack or four to suppress. I think I will attack these riflemen. Um, 
and keep going with that strategy. I guess I'm going after a rifleman at this point. So four, five. Just in case he wants to run away. Seven. So yeah, four here, plus one defense from the, the tile, and then two distance away. So yeah, seven or higher, two dice. I'm going for attack, not suppress. Uh, two fives, which is a miss. Okay. Okay. And then that's me. Okay. Before we do our next turn, can I just run to the washroom? Sure. Be right back. All right, we're back. Just checking the chat. Uh, yeah, Nikki, no card sleeves on the game uh, for Glare. And, like, again, I may never play this game after today. I don't know. So I don't really want to sleeve it up. Uh, there is shuffling in a deck builder. I probably should sleeve it. But to be honest, like, I probably won't play this game enough to, like, really need sleeves. But if I start feeling like we are, uh, also depend on clicking the like button, sharing the video, all that stuff. If you guys want to see more of this game on the channel, yeah, I'd probably sleeve it before the next time I play it. Um, but right now we're just demoing it. We're trying it out. I'm okay with the game. Let's get a little worn down. Card quality is not the greatest. So I definitely can see it needing sleeves. Uh, but no, we're just not playing with sleeves. Mainly because we're streaming it. Um, so yeah, I try to avoid sleeves on stream when I can. Um, and then, uh, I saw, uh, Mike James says, is that Rifleman A or Rifleman A? <laughs> Sorry. Hard to tell with you, Rob. <laughs> what are you talking about, A? <laughs> Uh, and yeah, yes, definitely the Germans, the dark, dark side kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, and it's because just the way I'm sitting, I'm sitting on the way the scenario faces this way. It just made sense to me for streaming. So there's symmetrical in this scenario, so it doesn't matter really what side, but, uh, hello, Frederick. Hello. Uh, no, we've already played Candy Lane on the channel. I can't, I can't use that again as a <laughs> April Fool's or anything. Nope. No, it's just scheduled because it worked out for us. No April Fool's for the channel this year because I forgot it was even that day. I had no idea. 
I never look ahead to April Fools. It's not something I remember no. uh, unless I think about it literally the year before. So, so I'll think about it today and then go, oh, what could I do for next year? But then I just forget and yeah, it's like whatever. Yeah, it gets closer. But sometimes when we're out, like I saw that like before I've seen games where I'm like, oh, let's buy that game. We can play it on April Fools for fun. Yeah. And, and, and you know, then just... and then like seven months later, I play it for April Fools or we just don't. And yep. it's like, yeah, but anyways. So, yeah. It's a funny holiday kind of thing, but like not really. I don't know. It's kind of okay, but yeah. Just because I work on YouTube videos doesn't mean I have to do April Fools, okay? Uh, all right. All right, back to draw. Yogi, thank Yogi. you for gifting five memberships to the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Much appreciated. Some familiar faces in those names of Very the generous. Names. Thank you. Thank you. Very generous. Thank you. Thank you, Yogi. All right. All right. Back to what? Oh, that we're doing? Yeah, sorry. All right. New turn. New turn. Thank you again, Yogi. All right. We are. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, let's try this. Oh, that actually can do. Hmm. No, let's go with my initial initial plan. Yeah. Good? Yep. Six. Three. Oh, you got it. Initiative's mine. Not that I wanted it. That's just the card I didn't want to play. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, let's go. Machine Gunner oh, A, oh gosh. which is or B, sorry, B is here. Machine Gunner B. Let's. Mm. Hmm. Let's move Machine Gunner B. Prove their odds a little bit. A little scary, they're coming out of the forest, so they're not as protected. This might be a problem. Maybe they have they... a lot of backup. So. Yeah, maybe they can run back if they need to. Uh, so it's like tough. It's like, I could roll two attack dice, but I need a higher number on them. Or I move forward one, and then my next time I attack, I need less higher dice by one. I don't know if that was worth it, but let's find out. Machine Gunner Bs are going to attack now with the second Machine Gunner B card against Rifleman B. Need a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or higher. 7 and a 5. Oh, Rifleman B? Rifleman B. Not in my hand. Well, that's good to know it didn't come from your hand. So they're not going to be trouble right now. Squad leader B is going to inspire one from B. And I'll play that again. And let's... Attack Rifleman B again. Oh my god. Seven and a again. five again. Nice. And if I didn't move up, those would have both been misses. So that was definitely the right play. Yeah, yeah, because I would need... Oh, no, I think it still would have hit, right? If I was back here... Yeah, seven hits. One, two... Yeah, it's equal to or higher than their defense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. I didn't need to move up. That was all a waste. I'm an idiot. I could have attacked again. Yes, it would do that ping if there was 50 memberships, yes. <laughs> I can turn it off, though. Yeah. <laughs> I can turn it off. Five is okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I can I can mute it or whatever while it's going crazy. But then I sometimes forget to turn it back on, and then and then I'm later like <laughs> two streams from now wondering why they're not working. Uh, that's sometimes from that. Go ahead. Alrighty. 
Well, command uh, platoon sergeant is going to bolster three, which is going to be uh, two rifleman Bs and an A. <laughs> Need that protection. And then scout is going to recon a fog of war out and draw a card. Oh, rifleman B, you say? What is rifleman B doing? Did he get out of there? Like, he's like in a deadly spot right there. I think... He moves back one. Okay. One. One. I keep initiative. Okay. Um, bolster A. Rifleman. Rifleman. And then let's machine gunner B. Uh, let's fire on this machine gunner. Mm -hmm. So I Four, need uh, six. Just six or higher. Oh, every time. Six and a one. Machine gunner no. A. Machine gunner A. Okay. Okay. Taking casualties. And then just a fog of war, so I'm done for the turn. Go ahead. Okay, platoon sergeant is going to bolster three. We're going to take two rifleman A's and a machine gunner A. And then Scout Leader A will conceal, so you will take a Fog of War to your hand. Uh, discard, right? Or discard, 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 yeah. And then Squad Leader A will inspire, and Scout Leader A will attack. Uh, let's do Gunner B. So we just need to hit four or higher. Five. Machine, Machine gunner, gunner B, removed from the game. All right. Your turn. One, two, three, four. One. One. I'll keep Got initiative. It. All right. Uh, let's do. Let's do rifleman B. I'll capture or control. So I officially have my first victory point. Rifleman B. We'll move. You can't move in there. Oh, yes. No scouting yet. Yep, yep. Thank you. No problem. Do you want to change it? Uh, I, I can't even do it, so I don't need to change it. No, but like... Uh, maybe, and maybe then I will... Let's attack with Rifleman B. Or... Nope. Uh, let's do Rifleman B. Let's have him attack the scouts. So seven or higher. I think five, six, seven, oh, six, a miss. And then we'll play machine gunners A, which are right here. I'll have them attack. Let's attack uh, this gunners here. Two dice, needing five, six, seven or higher. Seven, okay. seven, that's one hit. Not there. And then it's your turn. Machine Gunner A. All right. 
Rifle and B is going to move. Rifle and B is going to move. And then squad leader B will inspire and he will move. Draw, shuffle. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, six? Five, uh, three. Okay, uh, Rifleman B. I'll just shoot at your Rifleman. Fun. Oops. Whoops. Nine. I'm sure that's a hit. Uh, one, two, plus five, seven. I'll do it again. Four. I'll do it again. Four. Okay, your turn. I will use Scout B to recon this Fog of War out. Drawing a card. And I got it. Nice. I will control. Good game, yeah. I was yeah, I nothing I could do. I definitely messed up playing the way I did at the start. Uh, play too slow. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough. That's all good. Whatever. That was a good top deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very nice. All right. So that's a playthrough of Undaunted. Uh, yeah, so strategy, I was literally just trying to build up an empire at the beginning um, and then try to, I wanted to take uh, the one control, the two control point on the west side. And because last time I won by taking the one over by Mel's top right side of your screen. Um, and I wanted to not do that this time. I wanted to see if I could overcome her by killing her units on the west side of the board and try to take it over, even though it'd be more challenging. Mm -hmm. But you then just went for the rush strategy and because I was trying to bolster, 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 was like, whoops, I should have had riflemen and scouters who were expanding faster and instead I didn't. I was just trying to hunker down and protect and kill, but. Yeah, I think once you went yeah. first and you got all your um, gunners, I was like, uh oh, I have yeah, to, you have to rush these yeah. gunners. Yeah, and that was my mistake by doing that and then you just perfectly went the opposite way, which was great. Um, so yeah. So that's kind of what happened there. Um, but yeah, definitely we played before is way closer, like down to the wire, because we're both just like equally getting, like you literally last time we played, the exact same units I bought the first two times, you bought the exact same units the first two times. I was like, why is she doing exactly what I'm doing? But it was like so tight, like so tight when we played before. Um, because I like grabbed the three point spot quicker and then I raced up the right side. But uh, this time it's like didn't go that way. But I thought killing a rifleman and get him off the board I thought I had I way was, more time. I was in trouble there, I thought. And then I was like... No, well, I don't think you're in trouble. I just was like, man, I bought I some to time. Pivot and then bring my Rifleman B all the way over. Yeah, but I knew you could still do that because you still have so many Rifleman cards to put in the deck and yeah. see before I could get around to like doing what I want. Like, yeah, and you, they yeah. were far away, right? So you need yeah. the higher rolls. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, shooting from far away is not what I like to do. I like to get closer, roll, and be more like 99% feel like I'm going to hit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fine. But yeah, definitely a cool game. Uh, I love the simplicity of it. I love the like deck building side of it. I love the dudes on a map. I love it doesn't take that long normally. Uh, obviously, when we're playing on stream. It's like a little longer because we're discussing it. But definitely a cool game. If you want to see more on the channel, uh, leave it in the comments below. Hit the like button. Share the videos. Let us know. Uh, obviously, it gets more views and that kind of stuff. Maybe we can play a more advanced scenario. Take it a little more hardcore and like uh, play for hours kind of thing. Um, going through it. I don't think it's meant to even it says it only goes like an hour on the box Yeah, and I feel so like maybe even some of those little scenarios even though they're bigger and have more units and stuff 
Maybe the balance is there that it still ends in like 60 minutes. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But definitely I see the addiction in this game. I see why people like it. It's like that feeling of a war game. Uh, the setup is a little annoying, like finding the tiles, making sure the right sides and all that, and getting all the cards and putting them in separate decks. The setup doesn't wow me. It's kind of annoying for how quick the game is. I see. That is the one real downside I'll give it. I did not like setting up a scenario any time I played scenarios. Uh, there's not that much in this box, and I imagine with expansions, it only gets more annoying. Trying to look through even more tiles, more units, sorting them out. Uh, the insert for the box works, um, but it doesn't speed anything up. And again, if the games are done and it says on the box in 45 to 60 minutes, it's like, I don't know. But it's still fun. It's like definitely fun and is worth it, I think, to set it up and play that. But again, most deck builders have that downside of like having to unsort the cards yeah. before and after and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's also sorting through the tiles. Like it feels a little like, you know, I'm looking through, uh, finding all the separate tiles. I'll, if, what sides am I using? Lining them all up, putting right. everything on each tile, like all the right tokens on the right side, um, is a little annoying. But I'm, I'm again, I don't come from playing those crazy war games from the '80s that have like a thousand chits in them and stuff. So like, this probably is. You guys are laughing at me for what I'm saying, but um, yeah, that's the only real negative. But it's definitely fun. Um, so far, it's felt really balanced until today. I, I did weird strategies. It's all good. I was thinking it was gonna go longer. So I was building for the long game. But uh, yeah, it was definitely fun. I like the length of it too. You could potentially play more than one scenario yeah. in a night. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, Addy says no scenarios go over an hour. Okay, so even those bigger ones, maybe just based on the balance of them or mm -hmm. what, what the objectives are. Yeah, if you're looking for more scenarios uh, on the channel, if we do play in the future, check the playlist that I put down in the video description. It should be there. I think I did. Um, or I will put it in there uh, if we do more uh, streams. You can find them in there for sure. But yeah. Um, that's all I got. I don't know. Not much to say. The game's not like that crazy. Like, it's just a good game. It's definitely yeah, it's a good game. Fun. It's like deep strategically, I think, but like not rules wise, which is nice. But there's a little bit of randomness too, right? Based on the cards you draw at it's that It's a deck moment. builder and dice rolling. Yeah. Dice chucking deck builder. Like, uh, yeah, there's going to be some stuff that's like. Uh, yeah, it was out of my control. control. Yeah, but but it's like it's still fun. Yeah, because it's so short, it's like not bad. Because even if like oh, I had all bad dice rolls or bad draws or you know a couple choices I should have made different, um, it's like oh well, that was sixty minutes. Let's do it again. again. Yeah, let's yeah. play it again while it's all set up. Just fix your cards un un under your deck. Uh, yeah, so not bad, not bad. Uh, but yeah. Anything else? No. I don't no, know what else to say. I, I would be interested to try some of the um, more in-depth scenarios for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, it would be cool to play in a campaign. I just don't think I'd ever do that, to be honest. There's just other campaign games I'd rather be playing. Doesn't mean I don't want to do it. But streaming that is like way too much effort, and I don't think people would be that interested. But, I mean, you, I could be wrong. We'll see how this video does. Uh, we'll see if you guys are interested in the game at all. Uh, anyways, more streams coming on the channel. Stay tuned. Um, and thanks for subscribing. Thanks all. 52 of you who've oh, clicked wow. the like button. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. And thanks to these people over here for supporting the channel and more. Yogi, thank you so much for the gifted memberships today. Yes, thank, well. you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next stream. Bye. Bye-bye.